Conversion tracking. What is it? Why are we using it? How do we do it? Etc. cetera. Um, this is a conversation that we have all the time. So, you know, finally one of my client managers was like, can you please shoot a video on this? Because uh, we're going to use it often. Um, starting all the way from the beginning. Uh, conversion tracking refers to the process of, of tracking when a prospect does the thing. So uh, generally speaking, conversion tracking means uh, that we're tracking when somebody becomes a lead. So they filled out a form, uh, they downloaded something, uh, they've called, um, you can use uh, phone call conversion tracking, um, they've purchased a product. Uh, so whatever it is that you're optimizing for, for that particular campaign, you need to track the conversions related to that action. Now, there are many different ways to track conversions. Um, I wanna offer you a couple of really important notes. The first, and I think the most important is that you have to use Google Tag Manager. And there's just no ifs, ands, or buts. So if people aren't using Google Tag Manager, I don't think that you're serious about data acquisition. Um, Tag Manager is more reliable. It's safer. It, 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 it allows you to compile all of your tags in one place. Uh, it's free to use. It allows for user rights administration. Some really cool tools and functionality available and accessible to you that I don't know of any other application that lets us do the things that Tag Manager lets us do. So if you're not using Google Tag Manager, you're at a massive disadvantage. I realize that you can just... You can set up conversion tracking sans tag manager in certain instances. It's not worth it. It's not worth uh, the time that you would save. I know tag manager is a little cumbersome on the front end. Um, you know, I mean, the installation is pretty easy, but learning it can be hard. However, nothing is going to serve you more when it comes to uh, uh, conversion tracking. So um, rule number one is use Google Tag Manager. Uh, for my Google Ads folks. And to be honest with you, even if you're running like, you know, Facebook ads or um, Outbrain, Taboola, AdRoll, whatever, uh, Tag Manager does a an amazing job at helping you control and manage all of the various snippets of code that you're going to have to deploy on your site and the the way that the code is is seen, viewed, implemented, triggered, fired, etc. Um, so use Google Tag Manager uh, in order to track these conversions. Um, for call tracking, we use call tracking metrics. It's my favorite software. I'm not an affiliate or a reseller. It's just the one that I like the most. Um, I don't like using Google's um, onboard call tracking solution. Uh, the other option available to you is if you're a Go High Level user, I really like Go High Level's call tracking. Uh, and they have um, the ability to capture GCLID, which is really cool. So um, there's other tools out there. Call Rails is one. Um, I like call tracking metrics and what we do is we track and record every single phone call that our campaigns generate and then we listen to them, we score those calls manually and then we import those calls into Google Ads because the worst thing that you can do is give Google a false positive. Um, so you want to make sure that you're using call tracking metrics and that you're only importing calls that were actually leads. The big, big, big mistake that so many agencies make is they say, oh, anything over 45 seconds is a lead. That's like the gold standard in the agency space. I don't know why. The problem is, is most leads, most calls over 45 seconds aren't leads. Um, you know, I mean, you can get solicitors, uh, you can get um, people that think you're a different company, people calling to cancel their appointment, whatever. Uh, you know, there there are a, a ton of reasons somebody would click on your ad and call you. So um, listen to and record the call, phone calls, pipe those in manually. Um, for anything that's happening on site, with the exception of chat, um, your chat bot should have some level of Google Ads integration. And every chatbot is different, so I won't speak to that to too greater degree, but check in with them. Like we were using live chatting for a really long time and their Google Ads integration was, was fine. I think we were triggering an event inside of analytics and then piping that into ads, which isn't, it's not ideal, but it, it, it was good enough. Um, for your primary conversions, which ends up being forms. So if somebody schedules an appointment, if they download something, if they fill out a form, if they you know fill out your contact us form, what you want to do, the gold standard, is you want to have a separate thank you page for every conversion event. You want to have a separate thank you page for every conversion event. And there's a reason for this. Um, the separate thank you page allows us to identify what conversion took place. Now, that's not the only way to track a conversion. You can track events. Um, you can track clicks. Um, there's, there's fancier ways for conversion tracking. This is the simplest. It's the most archaic. It's also the most reliable. Because if somebody lands on that thank you page, they converted. There's no other way to get to the thank you page outside of filling out the form or scheduling or downloading the thing. And so what you're doing is you're, you're you know, I mean, we're just keeping it super simple. I know that there are more elegant ways of, of tracking, but they're also less reliable. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say far less reliable. We track using separate thank you pages. So you need a separate thank you page for every event that you want to track. Now, if you've got a contact us form on every single page of your website and 
you're not interested in tracking the efficacy of each page individually, which is fine, by the way, um, then that contact us form can have the same thank you page. But if you want to, and there are reasons not to do that, I understand that there's, you know, it's a, it's a mild breach of academic best practice, but in the real world, like I can totally see why that would be, um, you know, just to just make things easy, especially if a really robust website, but every single individual conversion that you want to track needs to have its own separate thank you page. Um, and what we're doing is we're tracking when somebody lands on that page. Uh, and then that unique, um, page view is the trigger that we establish inside of Google Tag Manager. Um, so we want to have a separate thank you page. The, the, the thank you page URL needs to be an entirely independent URL. So if your website is, you know, solate.com and somebody fills out the form, they should go to solate.com forward slash thank dash you. Um, we can't use hash bangs. You can't use, um, you can't use things that GTM isn't necessarily going to be able to see. You need to roll over onto a new page. So you can't have just the confirmation message that pops up. Even if it looks like a new page, Wix does this a lot. Um, and, and other website builders too, not to pick on Wix, but um, a lot of website builders, when you fill out a form, it'll look like the page changed because the confirmation message is there, but really it's it's the same page. It's just, you know, JavaScript something or whatever. I don't know where it's. Um, so you want to have a separate URL track uh, the thank you pages from a conversion perspective. And to be honest with you, that's going to be the majority between phone calls and form fills. That's the majority of your conversions. Um, if you're tracking separate thank you pages and you're using, assuming that you're even generating phone calls um, and you're using call tracking metrics for lead generation campaigns, that's the majority of your conversions. For e-commerce campaigns, it's a little bit different, um, obviously. But the nice thing about e-commerce campaigns is the conversion tracking is 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 integrated into the Google Ads ecosystem. So there's less of this discussion and argument. The one thing I'll say with, for e-commerce campaigns is don't rely solely on analytics data. You want to track your conversions inside of Google Analytics, yes, but you don't want to just take those conversions wholesale and pipe them into Google Ads. Instead, you want to track your, your e-commerce conversions inside of Google Ads and track them in analytics and then use uh, both tools to reconcile your information. Um, there's, there's, there's going to be small disparities because there's different attribution settings that you can play with. And they, they both look at, you know, um, uh, events in, in mildly different ways, but for the most part, it should let, let you kind of triangulate your data. You know, you look at uh, Shopify and you look at ads and you look at analytics and you're like, okay, all this matches up more or less. And then the things that don't match up, you can actually dig into and you're like, oh, well, I had last click attribution applied or, you know, time decay, or, um, there's, you know, uh, attribution lag or whatever. Um, yeah, but but other than that, the conversion tracking is the most important first step in being successful in Google Ads. Google Ads is a machine learning mechanism. Um, it's the closest thing to AI humanity has developed publicly. And the machine is smart, and it will go get you more of what you want. But in order to do that, you have to tell it what you want. And the way you tell it what you want is through conversion tracking. And if you're not tracking conversions properly, if you're throwing false positives, if you're... Um, kind of phoning it in the way that, you know, some agencies do with phone call leads. I know it's tedious. I have two full-time employees whose job it is to listen to and score phone calls. Like that job sucks. That's how I hire for it, by the way. I'm like, by the way, this job sucks. Um, it, it tends to be kind of an entry level, like, you know, if you want to be a specialist, but you don't have the experience, it's a really good place to start because you're going to learn a lot. Um, but we have to do it. You, we have to do it. Otherwise, you end up with flawed data. And, you know, now you just sent the world's most powerful machine learning mechanism off on a, on a, a rabbit hunt. Um, to go bring you more of what you don't want. Uh, so the conversion tracking thing ends up being really, really critically important. Um, that's all I got. I hope this is helpful. Uh, and I appreciate you watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, and I'll see you next video.